Hey, what's going on? So today I want to talk about something that I call the self image effect. And basically what that means is when you start liking the way that you appear when you're doing something in particular, let's say a, a certain skill, that's when you sort of have turned the corner and you start enjoying that thing more. So I know that sounds really big and ambiguous, but uh, let me go ahead and go into some more detail of you know, what actually that means and maybe an example as well so I can elucidate that point. So actually one really good example right off the bat that's very relatable because you're watching this right now or you're listening to me talk about this is literally for me uh, putting out videos, right? I think this is a common one, very relatable for a lot of people where when you start putting out videos, a lot of times you don't like the way you sound. You don't like the way that you appear on video. And for me, what I've come to see is as I've put out more and more videos, I adjust things here and there, but actually what ends up happening is I start to, first of all, not really mind how I appear on video. It's sort of, um, you sort of become desensitized to it to a certain extent, but then you actually turn the corner at a certain point, and sometimes you actually start to like how you sound on video. And for me, I've, I've sort of reached that point to be totally honest. Uh, you know, I don't wanna sound narcissistic or anything like that, but uh, what I mean by that is when I watch back my video, I don't cringe anymore. And I actually like the way, I, I like the sound of uh, the things that I say, right? Um, and I don't mean that once again in like a, a narcissistic way necessarily, but it's one of those things where you actually enjoy doing the thing. So I actually enjoy doing videos now because I don't have that self-consciousness that I did when I first got started, right? So that's my point. Another example might be um, singing. I don't really, I mean, I guess I put, a, put out a couple of videos of me singing. Uh, I'm still in that phase of, you know, I don't sound great and I don't necessarily like the way I sound when I sing, but I know that if I do it enough and if I practice and I get better, I'll eventually get to the point where I like the way that I sound and I'll keep doing it. Um, and another example, is like with sports, right? So when you first learn a sport, in that initial phase of learning, you might not like the way that you look when you're playing that sport. It might look awkward, um, or you know, actually, another related, relatable example is like infield, right? I remember I didn't like getting filmed. Um, I know a lot of students or clients didn't like getting filmed, but sometimes what happens is you get to the point where you actually enjoy it. And I remember there's one uh, student in particular where this was back in immersion and he actually enjoyed getting filmed. And it showed because when he actually went out, he would have this vibe about him where he would really enjoy going out there and, uh, and saying things. And when we were watching back, he was laughing and he thought it was funny. And so when you have that type of approach, you actually enjoy what you're doing. You're encouraged you're self-encouraged to keep going out and doing that thing, right? So I think that's once you that that's why I say once you turn that corner, I feel like it goes hand in hand with the thousand day rule because usually what I've come to find is that first year, oftentimes is that awkward year, and you look at yourself, you hit, hear yourself talking, or you look at yourself on camera, and you still feel self-conscious, and you're like, ah, oh, it's kind of cringy, right? But then you get to eighteen months or maybe a little bit sooner than that, maybe a year into it, 18 months, and then you start to see, okay, you know, actually I don't mind myself on camera so much, or I don't mind seeing myself. And then you actually get to the point where you actually kind of enjoy watching yourself because you have good form or you've worked on yourself, you like to see your progress. Um, and that's what I've seen. And the, the reason why I say you've turned the corner is because I believe this is a rep representation of your self image right? The way that you appear, the way that you see yourself. If you start to enjoy the things that you say, then you're probably going to talk more. Or if you start enjoying watching yourself on camera, you're probably going to make more videos. And so it's, it's, that's where the intrinsic motivation comes into play. But sometimes it takes that first year to, to kind of get through that first year, but keep going. And then once you break through to that point of you actually enjoy it, that's where it becomes more flowing and you have more unconscious competence, but it's bit by bit. It's not all at once, right? And usually that third year, you're, you're pretty solid. Uh, that's what I've come to find. So 
so I just wanted to share that um, that insight. That's something that I was thinking about that I kind of I thought about myself, but I don't think I've ever really talked about it openly with other people. Um, but it's something that I actually have found has been really helpful. I remember back when I was a dating coach, for example, uh, one of the first questions that I would ask is, do you think that girls like you? Right. I think this tells you everything, right? This question of, you know, I was working with a lot of guys and uh, would talk about their dating lives and I would ask them, do you think that girls like you? And that gives away everything because the way that you perceive yourself or the way that you think others perceive you, that gives away everything. Because if a guy says, yeah, I think girls like me, then most likely he's going to go out there, very little anxiety, open and willing to talk to girls and things like that, right? O open and willing to date. That's what, I, that, that's what I've seen. But a lot of guys who have that self-consciousness around girls liking them or thinking that, no, I don't think that girls really like me. I don't think that girls find me attractive. I think that, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever it is. That's where I see a lot of resistance when, when it comes to going out and talking um, and dating and things like that. And this isn't just dating specific. This isn't just for you know, men, men's dating advice. This is actually across the board when it comes to you know, starting a new business, for example. This can happen where you think to yourself, do you think that your business is going to be successful? Or do you think that people like your product? Or do you think that, you know, fill in the blank. What do you think that other people think about you? And another question that I would ask, for example, with the dating example is, when you walk into a cafe and let's say that there's you know a couple of girls in the corner and they see you walk in and they're whispering amongst each other what do you think they're saying about you if they're looking at you and you, you you can see that it looks like they're talking about you what do you think they're saying about you and that oftentimes gives away a lot too because once again that it doesn't actually matter what they're saying what matters more is what you think they're saying because that's your reality what you think other people are saying about you, what you're thinking is your reality. And so that goes hand in hand, once again, with the self image effect, where your perception of yourself, that's what is giving away everything when it comes to your belief, right? What you think others think about you, or when you see yourself on camera, that essentially is the foundation of your own belief. And if your beliefs are strong, if your beliefs are positive in general, if your beliefs are empowering, I think is a better way to put it, if your beliefs are empowering instead of discouraging, you'll come to find that you're going to be pulled towards doing that thing more, right? So let's say you have a positive belief or an empowering belief around dating, then most likely you're gonna be more willing to go out and date. If you have an empower, empowering belief around starting a business, then most likely you're gonna go out and be encouraged to start a business. And you could go on to any example, right? Um, but that's, that's really what I've come to find for me has been a critical aspect of, of learning and, and having intrinsic motivation. I think this is actually, um, this for me is, is a critical insight when it comes to intrinsic motivation, because people ask me all the time about discipline and willpower, but what I've come to find is a lot of times when I get to a certain point, because I used to have a hard time answering that question, because sometimes I'll get to a certain point where I didn't feel the need to force myself to do something, right? If I enjoy doing the thing, then I'll keep doing the thing. And it, it sustains usually for a good duration of time. So of course there might be certain days where you kind of feel off, but most likely if you're engaged in something that you feel is energizing for you and that you enjoy doing, and then you get to the point where you enjoy watching yourself back. Let's say you have someone recording you doing that thing. You enjoy watching yourself back then that's the formula, I believe, for intrinsic motivation. So let me leave you with that. And uh, that's it for today. I'll talk to you later. Take care.